Can you beat the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion without taking damage is a challenge that's already been done. In truth it feels like nearly everything at this point has already been done. And while there's something to be said for each creator bringing their own individual take on a challenge, I do mainly aspire to do challenges that have not yet been done before. But when I was in the process of making my last Oblivion challenge, a max difficulty one at that, I realised something. By turning the game difficulty up to max, it creates in itself a whole new challenge. So let's go ahead and discuss the rules for this challenge before viewer attention drops any further. So rule 1 is that I must have the game difficulty set to max at all times. Rule 2 is that I must have my health set in such a way that one hit will always kill me. But this is actually extremely easy to do using console commands. And rule 3 apart from the obvious, you know, draining all my health thing will be no glitches, cheats or exploits. So now that we're all clear on the rules, let's get started. So to start with I created a high elf character for their increased magicka pool. I called myself Paper Tiger because I literally couldn't think of anything funnier to name myself. Set the game difficulty to max and console commanded my health to zero. Now I would later change this to two but we'll get to that in just a little bit. Emperor Uriel Picard came into my cell and spent about four minutes staring at me as I went AFK to go and talk to my wife. I know this because I accidentally left the recording running. Way to fill up your hard drive you bloody idiot. Now under normal circumstances playing on max difficulty will lead to your quick and inevitable demise after one or two hits. But since I currently have my health set to zero somebody giving me a nasty look would be enough to kill me. So I stayed back and let the guards dispatch the first Mythic Dawn agents before looting anything that I could. And this is where the challenge really begins as I deal with my first opponents, the common sewer rat. My first plan was to hide up on the ledge and just cast fireballs at them. It took around 4-5 to five fireballs to take down one rat and I was pretty confident that I could do this before they reached me. But to make a long story short, I was wrong. So at this point I didn't think that running past them would be a viable option here as one of them simply sneezing in my direction would be enough to kill me. I knew that I would have to take out both of the rats plus the one in the next room in order to progress. But first it's time to talk about today's sponsor Raid Shadow Legends. Guys I'm joking, I'm joking. Have you seen this sub count? I couldn't even get sponsored by HelloFresh at this point and they're paying everybody. I discovered that by jumping across to one of the ledges just opposite the opening where the rats come from, they wouldn't actually be able to get me. This would allow me to just stand back and fireball them in complete safety. Moving on to the next room I had just enough distance to take down the initial rat before it reached me. I allowed the rats and zombies to fight each other, they softened up the zombie so that I was able to take him down with fireballs, however this was a very close one. It's extremely lucky that zombies are slow otherwise this would not have gone well and had I not picked a high elf I don't believe I would have had enough magicka to do this. Another key element to getting through this challenge is quick saving. You have to pretty much quick save after everything you kill and try and take out one enemy at a time where possible. For some reason rats are very tanky inside the sewers and they will run at you quite quickly so you really do have to take them out before they reach you. And this was the beginning of a long line of deaths. Like I'm not joking you could actually microwave a meal quicker than it took me to get through this room. See one of the problems that I was having was if I was able to take out one of the rats in the room the rest of them would become aware of my presence and aggravated by me. And this happened a lot of times. I'd also be lucky if I only got one rat attacking me, sometimes it would be two or even three. Every time I killed at least one rat there would be another two to come and finish me off. It was becoming extremely frustrating. At one point I even tried just running away and casting fireballs hoping I'd only get chased by one. However this still didn't work. I did finally manage to get through this room but I think everything just kind of lined up in my favour. For starters, I was somehow able to take out the first rat without any of the other rats noticing me. I then managed to get two fireballs successfully on the second rat across the room. As he ran towards me I was able to finish him off before he reached me. The last rat was still not on my tail. And after quick saving it was a case of doing the same again, just launching fireballs at him and taking him out before he reached me. 
There's two more rats in the next room. I was able to take out one of them before I got killed by the other one. I feel like a lot of this challenge is going to be working out a strategy of how to complete each room and dying several times along the way. I would also have to employ a strategy of running backwards while casting fireballs with near perfect aim. And at this point a realisation came over me. This is just the tutorial section. It's meant to be the easiest part of the game and yet it is so extremely difficult. I felt pretty confident that with enough attempts I would be able to get out of the sewers but beyond that I really wasn't sure what was to come. I actually had to sneak past the first goblin. Now this is actually the Oblivion stealth tutorial part of the game but I don't think anyone actually ever does this. I was also able to spring the trap on the second goblin and the log trap to take out the next two. So the next room has at least four goblins and a few rats and while I did try and actually fight them it just wasn't working out. I was able to run past all of them. I met up with Captain Uriel Picard once again and picked the apprentice as my star sign. This is not something I would normally do as the apprentice sign gives you 100% weakness to magicka coupled with the high elf initial 25% weakness and I now have 125% weakness to magicka. However this actually doesn't matter because my objective here is to not get hit by anything so I might as well just take the magicka boost. I had a very frustrating time trying to deal with the assassin that takes down the emperor. He killed me at least six times, it just seemed very difficult to get away from him and Bora seemed quite reluctant to take out the assassin. Again it would just be a case of attempting it several times until I got things the way I wanted them. Thanks to a combo of running away and acrobatics, Boris was finally able to take out the assassin and I was able to make my class. I created a custom class called Working because I'm hilarious. I picked Magic as my specialisation as I intend to use Magicka more than any other skills. I therefore picked Intelligence and Speed for my favourite attributes as I'm also going to need to be fast. I also picked major skills that I actually intend on using for this challenge. Skills that I think could really help me out. Acrobatics for, you know, jumping away and hiding up high ledges. Conjuration and illusion for general combat. As well as sneaking to try and, you know, hide from the enemy. And after getting killed by another rat, I remembered, oh yeah, I have conjuration now. Let's try that. Now, I normally wouldn't rely on a basic summon skeleton spell as I find it to be excessively weak. However, for whatever reason, it was able to deal with the rest of the enemies within the sewers. Now I do have a theory behind this, but I'll explain a bit more about that later on. And finally, after, whoa, 8 minutes, I was finally able to get out the sewers. Okay, I really need to speed things up here. So I discovered my first real problem upon exiting the sewers. Fast travel doesn't work. I wasn't sure what was going on here, I thought it was a glitch, so I reloaded and left the sewers again attempting to try and fix the problem, but it still wasn't working. I then resorted to loading a different save file from a different game and try the fast travel there, and it did work. So to put it simply, I was not willing to do this game without fast travel. Now I was actually able to fix the problem and get fast travel working again, but let's make this a little competition. Can anyone answer the following questions in the comments section? 1. Why was fast travel broken? And 2. How did I fix it? Now there is actually very subtle clues in the rest of this challenge that will kind of reveal what the actual problem was. But if you did guess correctly, your prize is you are allowed to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you didn't get the answer, well, your commiseration prize is you're allowed to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's like a participation award, except the only winner is me. Anyway, while I've been talking, I've been power leveling my conjuration skill. I wanted to get it up to 75. I also did the same thing with my illusion skill. I found a way of leveling up both sneak and illusion by sneaking into a wall using auto move and repeatedly casting the starlight spell. I also purchased a summon clan fear, touch of rage and dominate creature spell. Then just as Boris had instructed I went to see Joffrey. I told him that I was there when the emperor died. 
you'd better explain yourself. Now. Yeah, sure, I could have explained myself, but I really don't think he would have liked the explanation. As per his instruction, I headed to Kavach to look for Martin. What I found was a giant eye of Sauron outside. Luckily, I have several Kavach guards to dispatch any of the enemies, but I decided this might be the first opportunity to employ my clan fear. I shall name him Bluebell. Okay guys, we gotta put this video on hold while I deal with a lawsuit from My Little Pony. I'll be back in a bit. So the Plains of Oblivion are notoriously treacherous. Everything in it, including the plants, is out to kill you. I have two weapons at my disposal here, Bluebell and Dominate Creature. I also have a Kavach guard with me by the name of Ilan Vonus. I aim to keep him alive as long as possible. And thanks to the combination of Bluebell and Illand, I was able to pretty easily actually make my way to the Sigil Tower. Ellen did eventually die, however Bluebell is severely overpowered. I probably should have explained this earlier, but I'm going to be sticking at level 1 for as long as possible. And my reasoning for this is that enemies will scale with you as you level up within the game, so in certain circumstances it can actually be more beneficial to keep at a lower level. So I said I'd come back to my theory a bit later and I guess now's the time. So my theory as to why Bluebell is so overpowered and indeed all summon creatures would be is it because I'm on max difficulty. See I believe that my summon creatures benefit from the same stat buffs from max difficulty as the enemy creatures would. Meaning I effectively have a clan fear with max difficulty stats on my side. And so long as I can keep to level 1 for as long as possible, all other enemies will be pretty underpowered in comparison. Now this mechanic actually worked to my advantage and allowed me to sail through the Kavach gate very easily. All I had to do was let Bluebell loose on my enemies and run up and grab the Sigil Stone. I think I only got killed once or twice inside the Oblivion gate, so, so far so good. Getting to Martin on the other hand was a lot more difficult. For one, there's a big fight going on inside Kavach between the guards and the Daedric creatures. There's a lot of fireballs and things being thrown about, so it's quite difficult to avoid everything. And yes, I did end up getting killed by a stray fireball at one point. But I suppose these things are bound to happen. So when I was talking to Brother Martin, I noticed a very strange glitch going on. Have you spotted it yet? It's actually raining inside the church. Now initially I thought this was something that I just never noticed before and that the rain was actually coming through the hall in the roof of the church. But when I headed back to Wayne on Priory I found that the rain effect had kind of frozen but was still present. So I tried reloading to fix the problem but that did not work. I decided it might go away once I headed inside the chapel to talk to Joffrey. But no, the rain effect is still there. Granted, it might be quite hard to see, but I assure you, it is there. I actually had to completely quit the game, as in close the whole thing down and open it back up again to fix the problem. I'm getting some serious glitches today. I assume it's due to artificially lowering my health with console commands to a point it was never intended to go to. But anyway, it turns out the head of the secret service of the Empire has lost the most important artifact in the Empire. Can anything else go wrong today? So my next job was to locate the secretive cult called the Mythic Dawn. This would require a lot of investigatory work. This would mean I'd be constantly busy and on the go for the next several days and might not always have time to feed my clan fear. That's why I use HelloFresh, the perfect solution. <laughs> Sorry guys, I couldn't even get through that one. I'll, I'll try and stick to the point. So once you reach Boris, you're actually supposed to follow him into the basement of the tavern and then a Mythic Dawn agent will follow him. However, I decided to just use the Rage spell. This will initiate combat straight away, allowing Boris to take him out without having to actually get involved in any fighting. And with that taken care of, I now had the second Mythic Dawn book. I then blackmailed a Wood Elf into giving me the location of the Mythic Dawn sponsor. Then it was time for me and Boris to head down there. 
But, quote Boris, there are rats and goblins down there, and from what I've seen of you, you're an experienced failure. I mean, seriously, Boris, how could you let the Emperor die? You literally had one job. No, I don't want to hear that it's coded into the mechanics of the game and it's part of the main storyline. You're a failure. Admit it. But, to be fair, he did actually deal with everything in the sewers for me. I mean, I did summon Bluebell occasionally, but I didn't even need to. Well, except of course the room where I met the sponsor. I just allowed Bluebell to absolutely destroy him. And of course, Boris died the way he lived. Disappointingly. But I now had all the Mythic Dawn books, as well as the location of the Mythic Dawn Shrine. I also purchased the Ghost Walk spell, giving me invisibility for 60 seconds, extremely useful for getting through the Mythic Dawn Shrine. I actually dropped a few pieces of equipment that I had before speaking to Harrow, things like torches and lockpicks, because once he takes all of your equipment, you can just go back and pick them up again. I allowed him to lead me directly to Manka Cameron. My first attempt at taking the Mysterium Xarxes, I tried to release the prisoner before taking the book. I was instantly killed with lightning. On my second attempt, I simply just grabbed the Mysterium Xarxes and then used the Ghost Walk spell. Because none of the Mythic Dawn could actually see me, I was able to just run out. They did seem to be somewhat aware of my presence, but none of them actually attacked me. This was actually the easiest Mythic Dawn Shrine that I have ever done because of Ghost Walk. And using Bluebell would not have been viable because there's just too many of them around casting too many spells. I definitely would have been killed. I returned to Martin with the Mysterium Xarxes who told me that such a thing was dangerous even to handle before immediately snatching it from me. Although, that being said, it was whispering a lot of dark secrets to me. My next task was to find some spies in Bruma, believed to be operating around the Haresta runestone, just south of Cloud Ruler Temple. Now you can actually just use the wait command until one of the spies turns up, at which point I simply just used Bluebell to take care of the first one. I tried using the wait command until the second one appeared, except it was a conjurer that actually appeared. Still though, not a difficult opponent for Bluebell, so long as I kept out the way. After we taken care of the conjurer, I just used the way command again until the second spy appeared. Bluebell took him out as well. And after raiding through Gerald's house, I found the super secret plans of the Mythic Dawn to invade Bruma. So Martin needs a few items for his ritual. The first is the Blood of a Daedra Lord. Now normally I would just steal a portion of glow dust from one of the merchants and present it to Azura, however I messed up the following things. One is that I forgot to actually do that, so luckily Bluebell was able to take out one of the will-o'-wisps for me. The second is I forgot you have to be level 2. Okay so we leveled up quickly, increased a few attributes no one really cares about, let's move on. Now that I had everything for Azura's offering, I gave it to her and she told me to go and slay five of her followers who had fallen victim to the Vampire Dratic. This is normally one of the harder parts of the challenge. Indeed, the Orc Vampires are exceedingly tanky. So I just hid behind Bluebell again and watched him smash through all of the vampires. I actually did get killed once in here. But it was actually from springing a trap, not from any of the vampires. Still, I had to reload and do it all again, but it didn't take long. I was a little bit concerned at one point because there was an orc vampire and another one who seemed to want to attack me. However, he did turn and start attacking Bluebell instead, which was lucky for me because on my own, there is absolutely no way that I could deal with these vampires. And finally, with the last vampire slain, I was able to return to Azura and collect the Azura Star. Joffrey had informed me that an Oblivion Gate had opened up outside of Bruma. I had to go down to meet Captain Bird and the rest of the Bruma Guard. If I could show them how to close an Oblivion Gate, they would be able to do it for themselves in the future. Now for this quest, not only do I have an invincible ally with me in Captain Bird, 
but I also have many of the Bruma Guard, so to be honest, this shouldn't be too difficult. I said it shouldn't be too difficult. Shouldn't be too diff- oh, come on, really? So apparently there was a lot of fireballs being thrown about from all directions and inevitably I was eventually going to get- Oh look, there it happened again. I did manage to stay out of the way long enough to make it into the sigil tower in order to be killed again. Okay, I really just need to stay out of the way and rely on Bluebell and the rest of the Bruma Guard to deal with this. I just thought, imagine if somebody skipped from the start of the video to right now and was like, who the hell is Bluebell? God, I hope somebody comments that. To be honest, the amount of times I died in this gate was down to me being not as careful as I should have been, but it wasn't really that difficult to get through it because Captain Bird is an absolute tank and he's also invincible. So I'd say that up till now, Brother Martin hasn't really asked me for too much. You know, a few fetch quest items here and there, and oh yeah, the blood of a divine god. Anything else I can get for you while I'm here, Martin? Maybe a unicorn? Oh no, actually, wait, no, those, those actually exist here. Anything else I can get you while I'm here, Martin? Perhaps a perpetual motion machine? Or maybe the secrets of the universe? So in order to get the blood of a divine, I would have to head to Sankator. Now it is occupied by ghosts and skeletal blades. Just for fun, I actually did try and fight the ghosts, but with this being max difficulty, I had absolutely no chance. Where's Bluebell? Now I could have also used the Dominate Creature spell in here, and that would have given me control over at least one of the ghosts. But it was just so much quicker and easier to use my clan fear. As it turns out, he has a taste for ectoplasm. And so long as I kept out of his way while he did his thing, I wasn't really in any danger of getting hit. And slowly but surely, he began to smash through all of the skeletal blades, freeing their spirits one by one. By far the easiest run of Sankator that I have ever done, and I was able to grab the armor of Tiber Septim. The next item that I was required to get was the Great Welkid Stone from Miskarkand. Now Miskarkand is probably my most hated of all dungeons just because of how maze-like it is. And there seems to be two types of enemies in Miskarkand, zombies and goblins. The zombies and the goblins will fight each other which is really handy. I also had Bluebell to back me up. Plus, zombies are extremely slow, which means their chances of actually catching me were slim to none. So my strategy was, once again, hide behind Bluebell. You know, if it's not broken, don't fix it, and the strategy seems to be working very well. I was definitely concerned with the King of Muskarkin, though. Once I collected the Great Welkid Stone, three dread zombies would appear, along with the King of Muskarkin himself. My initial idea was to, of course, use Bluebell, but also use Dominate Creature on the zombies. I did not get the chance to do this. You see, because I'd already summoned Bluebell, I wasted too much Magicka, and while I was waiting for my Magicka to regenerate enough for me to actually cast Dominate Creature, Bluebell had already taken care of all the zombies. You know what? It's on you. Just deal with the King of Muskark and I don't care. My objective here is to not get hit and that's exactly what I'm doing. So, you know. Also, you don't actually have to kill the King of Muskark and I just thought I would for a change. When I returned to Cloud Ruler Temple, I found Martin in full combat armor. It seemed he was preparing to lead us into battle. So Martin explained that the last item he would need for his ritual is a great sigil stone. In order to do this he would need to allow the Daedra to open up a great gate just outside of Bruma. The Countess was not happy about this, but I mean if you really think about it there's nothing that Martin or anyone else can actually do to stop the Daedra from doing this, so I don't really see what she's so upset about. It's going to happen. And man, let me tell you, the meeting was wild. Normally, the Countess and Martin meet each other in the chapel, 
For some reason, Martin decided to leave the chapel while the Countess was on her way. They then passed each other in the street and did not acknowledge each other at all. God damn, I love this game. So the only real objective that you have in the Great Gate is to get through it as quickly as possible as you do have a 15 minute time limit I believe. Now before the Great Gate opens it's actually quite dangerous because Martin can be killed and you will just completely fail the game here. But as it's actually beneficial to just run through this gate and ignore all enemies it's actually pretty well designed for this challenge. And it's because of this gate specifically that I chose the acrobatic skill as one of my major skills. You see, there are ways to get around certain things in certain places of this game if you have a decent enough acrobatic skill and you can skip out certain parts. I also used the ghost walk spell which definitely helped avoid enemies. But to be honest, you don't really want to be wasting time fighting enemies when you do have a time limit so... Being invisible really helped. And the rest was pretty straightforward. Just use the ghost walk spell, run through and grab the great sigil stone. Job done. So at long last we had everything we needed for Martin's ritual in order to get into Manka Cameron's paradise. Now the annoying thing about Manka Cameron's paradise is that he does not shut up. But then the three of you still left watching this video have listened to me ramble on for 26 minutes so I think I can put up with him for just a bit longer. So his paradise is filled with all sorts of Daedric creatures which honestly aren't really too difficult because I have ghost walk so I can just ignore everything. I really really thought that I was going to be killed off Cathetet. You see I summoned Bluebell but Cathetet just chased me. He was only interested in me. So I had to run around a couple of times and try and get Bluebell to take him out for me. Now you do also have the option to work for Cathetet so you don't have to fight him but this just seemed quicker and actually easier. I took the bands of the Chosen from his corpse and met up with Eldermill, a defector who wanted to help me take down Manka Cameron. One of the good things about Eldermill is that he can't actually be killed so you've kind of got another invincible ally. I used Bluebell to take out Manka Cameron's kids before I actually entered his sanctum. And this is because I would be able to get a shot at him before his kids regenerate, meaning I could actually have a 3 on 1 fight here. So initially Manka Cameron does not count as an enemy, so when I summoned my clan fear he would not automatically attack. So I figured I'd try and attack him, of course he has a reflect spell effect and I died. You can also initiate combat simply by talking to him, this seemed to work a bit better. And this really illustrates just how overpowered the clan fears actually are on max difficulty. Look how easy it was for him to take out Manka Cameron. After that it was just a case of taking back the Amulet of Kings. And with that we had one final objective, get Martin to the Temple of the One. Now this is also very hard because Martin can be killed here. Also, I got arrested on the way to the Elder Council Chambers because Bluebell killed one of the NPCs outside of Bruma. We're about 30 seconds away from huge oblivion gates opening up inside the city and I'm the only one that can stop them and you choose to arrest me now? Anyway, I finally brought Martin to the Elder Council Chambers to find out, surprise surprise, Huge Oblivion Gates had opened up inside the city. Who saw that coming? And while I do have to be very careful here because Martin can be killed, my only objective now is to get to the Temple of the One. And you know what guys? I actually did it. I actually beat the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion on max difficulty without taking damage. So to the one person left watching this video, I'd like to thank you so much for watching today. I really hope you have enjoyed and learned something about this game. I know I have. But man, this one was a lot of fun. I mean, Oblivion on max difficulty is just pure brutal. I honestly don't know what to make of this challenge. I mean, yeah, it was hard, but I think I've learned that conjuration in this game is just next level broken. 
But it was a really fun challenge. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I certainly did. I'd just like to thank you all very much for watching today. Please like, subscribe and all that good stuff. Leave any comments if you do have any. And I will see you guys next time. Take care.